Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about shoulder joint. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint between the scapula and the humerus. It is a major joint connecting the upper limb and the trunk. Due to the very loose joint capsule that gives a limited interface of the humerus and scapula, it is the most mobile joint of human body. After watching this video, you will be able to know everything related to the shoulder joint, such as its anatomical structure, its function, and the most important disease that affect it. Our role today is to answer most of our questions regarding shoulder joint. Today we have Dr. Chong, who is a leading doctor at Yonsei Sadang Hospital. He is going to discuss with us everything about shoulder joint from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Queenie, and before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Chang. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you for giving us time today. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So moving on to our first question. Mm -hmm. What is exactly a shoulder joint shoulder and joint. why is it called the most mm -hmm. mobile joint in uh, yeah. our body? Because our shoulder joint is a joint that can rotate 360 degrees, the risk of injury is high and the possibility of degenerative diseases is quite high. So the difference from the knee is that the knee can also have many diseases. But the knee is a load-bearing joint. However, the shoulder has no load to support, but rather just rests. So it is a joint with a lot of movement. So the structure of the shoulder is unique. Of course, it is composed of bones, but there are a lot of muscles in order to widen the range of motion of the joint. This muscle is divided into two layers. There is a large muscle on the outside, the triceps, and the rotator cuff on the inside. There are four small muscles inside. There are four tendons. The supraspronatus muscle at the top, the subscapularis muscle in the front, and the infraspinatus muscle, and the teres minor muscle in the back. These four tendons hold the joint in place. The large triceps muscles on the outside are responsible for driving the movement. So if you use your shoulder a lot, the tendon and rotator cuff in the shoulder may become inflamed or torn. So a rotator cuff tear happens quite often. More than 60 to 70 percent of people with shoulder pain have problems with the rotator cuff, causing pain and diseases. So what diseases most often occur at the shoulder joint? Representative diseases include rotator cuff tear, frozen shoulder and calcific tendonitis. It can be summarized into these three, and it can be said that these account for most of the diseases. In addition, there are some instability, such as shoulder arthritis, but I think the three main diseases are rotator cuff tear, frozen shoulder, and calcific tendonitis. Uh, so what kind of medical mm. examinations yeah. are used to diagnose uh, disease at the shoulder joint? Yeah. Basically, x-rays are taken, and if necessary, ultrasound and MRI can be performed to make a more accurate diagnosis. We also have tomograms in our hospital. This x-ray can be diagnosed through more precise imaging like CT. Yeah. So we talked about the examinations, how about the treatments? When the disease is accurately diagnosed, there are various treatments. And treatment can be thought of in two main ways. One is non-surgical treatment, and the other is with surgery. Nowadays, there is an endoscopic treatment without incision, which can be broadly divided into two types. Non-surgical treatment, and conservative treatment includes simple drug treatment, physical therapy, or injection. And there are various types of injections. There are various injections such as prolo injection, PRP injection, DNA injection, collagen injection, that is given accordingly. In addition, in the case of calcific tendonitis, significantly effective treatments can be done such as shock waves, or through physical therapy or manual therapy that broadens the range of motion of the joint. If you see the effect of this conservative treatment, it may end there. 
But in some cases, surgical treatment these days, it is treated with an endoscope. In the case of a complete rotator cuff tear, as it does not heal non-surgically, it is also treated with an endoscope. The rotator cuff suture is sutured through a small hole through an endoscope. For mm. conservative mm. treatment and surgical treatment, yeah. at what stages okay. is done each one of them? Yeah. In the case of a rotator cuff tear, the effect of conservative treatment can be seen a lot in case of a partial tear or not a complete tear. Even in such a case, a partial tear, if conservative treatment is not effective for three to six months, there are cases where arthroscopic surgery is unavoidable. In the case of complete tear, in some cases, the patient's age, occupation, range of activity, etc., and the degree of discomfort in daily life is checked and surgical treatment is started right from the beginning. I believe that surgery decisions can be made by considering the patient's condition as a whole, rather than relying solely on MRI or diagnosis. What is exactly shoulder arthroplasty and what is it used for? If the rotator cuff tear has advanced a lot, Endoscopic or arthroscopic sutures may not be able to close it. In particular, older people over 65 years of age, they cannot use their own tendons. Artificial joints are enforced. The shoulder artificial joint is slightly different from the knee. There may be artificial joints due to wear and tear of the shoulder, as well as the joints. But also, shoulder function can be improved through a specifically designed artificial joint taking the place of the tendon when the rotator cuff is completely completely torn and unable to use its own tendon. A complete tear of the shoulder tendon prevents the arm from rising. So eating is difficult, and daily life is very difficult. If you have an artificial joint, your arm will rise, and you will gain strength, and your pain will improve a lot at night. So artificial joint surgery can also be performed. Mm. Uh, doctor, is there any mm. contraindications for shoulder uh, arthroplasty? Mm. In this case, there is a contradiction that an artificial joint cannot be performed. One, when there is no external deltoid function, even if an artificial joint is performed, the arm cannot be used properly. So you must make sure to check the function of the deltoid muscle and the large external muscle before operating. When there is wear and tear on this muscle, it is useless to perform the operation. So it is necessary to know for sure whether the deltoid muscle function is present or not. Another is when the joint is inflamed. If inflammation is severe inside, additional inflammation may occur after surgery. So it is contradicted when the level of inflammation in the joint is very high. Yeah. And for how long can an artificial shoulder joint be used? When using an artificial joint, it can be used for a very long time due to the recent development of technology. Basically, I think that it can be used for more than 10 years, and even 20 years or more, if used properly. Mm. So is it possible to go for sports and any physical activities after mm. shoulder yeah. arthroplasty? Yeah. Since surgery requires a recovery period, it is a little painful for about three months, and it is difficult to write properly. But after six months, it can be used wonderfully. So after a year or so, it is easy. The pain is very rare, and to some extent, daily life is possible. So you can think of it as a period of six months to a year. All right. So if you have any suggestions or just advices for people who want to prevent shoulder uh, diseases? When a disease occurs, treatment is important, but prevention before it occurs is most important. There are many ways to prevent it, but among them, our shoulder is a joint where joint mobility is important. So stretching is very good. So for everyday office workers, if you work in front of the computer and do stretching exercises like barehanded gymnastics once every two hours, it is very helpful. Let me briefly explain how to stretch. Interlock your fingers like this and stick them out in front of you. Stick it out and pull it all the way up. Feels great, right? Push it back like this, behind your head and stretch. Raise it again and lower it again. Then cross your arms like this, 
and pull for about five seconds. Then pull it the other way around. Then slightly rotate your shoulders back and forth. Repeat this three times. This is a very good stretching exercise because it can prevent frozen shoulders, rotator cuff disease, calistific tendonitis, etc. And it's important to stretch a lot, but sometimes it gets sore, right? If you exercise a lot or have pain for various reasons, take a break for a week or two, and if the pain subsides, it will be fine. But if the pain persists for more than two weeks, it is recommended to go to the hospital and check it. If you keep postponing, even the same disease is left untreated. It may become difficult to treat. So if the pain persists for more than two weeks, we recommend that you go to the nearest hospital and get a diagnosis and treatment from a specialist. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Today we learned many things about it, and the doctor explained in detail everything related to shoulder joint. Thank you for joining us today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll respond to you as soon as possible.